Hi, welcome to Undead Yarn. My name is Heidi, and you can find me as Nitty Girl and Ravelry and uh, YouTube. And you can find me as Undead Heidi on Instagram and fixing my hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> on Instagram and on Twitter. This is take two. I have given up on recording on my computer. I don't know what's wrong with it. It says that the video, the sound is on and I have worked with it several times. It keeps defaulting to turning it off. I'm frustrated because that's the whole reason I bought the computer was so I wouldn't have to record on my phone, but here I am recording on my phone. So here we go. This is take two, episode 73. I may rush through things a little bit more this time because uh, there are other things that I need to do now. <laughs> so, what I've been working on in my autism awareness bag. This is by Silver Shed Studios. Um, I have finished my first Harry Potter sock. Look, it's awesome, isn't it? I really love the dye job on this. This is BC Yarnings and it's her new Targi uh, base. And I'm not sure what the name of the base is because I went to put it into Ravelry and I don't know if she's entered the Targi base yet. So that's one. Um, I've finished, well almost finished, um, a new project. This is my new colorway for Halloween called This is Halloween. And it's my first all speckled dye yarn. And yeah, I guess with the light you can see better than it was. Even outside I had trouble today showing the colors because um, it's got neon pops of orange. I don't know if you can really see them there. Um, back here, yes, that's it. That's exactly what it looks like and I'm really happy with it. Um, I already put up some pre-orders. The pre-orders are all gone. I dyed them up, I've sent them out. You guys will get them soon. I may not put this up again until September because not only next week do I start back to work, but we also are going to be having some remodeling work done on our house. And I have the feeling it's going to be really noisy and messy. So it may be um, either the end of August or the beginning of September sometime before I record again. Plus, I'm going to Into the Wool in uh, at the beginning of September. Um, I do have one more thing that I'm working on and it's in my kitchen counter crafter bag, which has that neat um, snap closure. And I will definitely finish these for the Into the Wool Knit Along, which is great. Uh, these are Night Owl fibers and this is the Pumpkin Patch colorway. I'm almost done with both socks. As you can see, they both just need their afterthought heel. And that is actually my favorite heel for, um, for stripey socks. I have done the OMG heel and I really like that. It fits well. It's just that I have to pull out the directions every time I do it and so I kind of tend to fall back to afterthought heel or heel flap with a gusset. So those are just the ones I use the most. I have tried other ones. I really don't like short world heels. I have bought the fish lips kiss heel. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I'm going to try it at some point, but I will say that I really don't like the way that it looks. I don't like how the sides, you can see all the seams on the sides. I don't like that, but um, I'll probably try it just because everybody else has tried it and I did buy the pattern. So at some point I will try it. Um, I've tried lots of heels. My favorites still are Afterthought and Heel Flap and Gusset. Oh, and OMG Heel, if I... <laughs> If I can commit that to memory, then I will use it because I do um, like the way it fits. It fits really well. Uh, those are like two things I'm working on. I think that's it for works in progress. Let me check. Yes, those are all my works in progress. Um, I don't have any FOs or spinning, but I am planning to start the Takushka cowl, which came in a kit by Fiber Nymph Dye Works, and this is the colorway. I believe it's, uh, let's see, it's called Dark Fire. So I'm looking forward to doing that, and I'm doing that for the knit along with 90% um, with knitting. She's doing a kit knit along. And if you have a kit by Fiber Nymph, or she's even letting you use things like um, cross stitch kits or other knit kits, anything that you bought together as a kit, you can knit it and enter it into her, um, into her, 
contest and you can win a $25 skein of yarn from her shop. So I think that's pretty good. And I'm not sure if she has other prizes, but that's the one I remember because that's why I want to do it. <laughs> um, next, uh, I was going to talk about my cruise, but since I'm recording this on my phone, I don't want to put too much memory on it. I want to get it on the phone and upload it and off the phone. So I'm not going to go into the cruise, but you can look online. I just posted some pictures on um, several pictures on Instagram. I wanted to show you guys. This is how I organize the classes I've taken. You can't see it, but it says classes. Um, on the last podcast, I talked about all the different places I had taken classes. I'm not going to go into that here. But what I do is I used to just throw all this stuff like in between the books. And I had trouble finding the information when I wanted to use it. Because usually you take a class and you don't use info right away. At least I don't. Um, but when I did want to use the info, I had trouble finding it. So I made this booklet and I use um, sheet protectors. You know, like you would use... Like people used to use in, um, I think it was in high school, used to use it to put reports in. Um, and here is an example of how I keep things together. This is the Franklin Habits Knitted Plaid class that I took. I put all my worksheets in there together. And I put a swatch, the swatch in if I made a swatch. Um, here is what my swatch looks like. I won't go into details because it is a pay-for class. But he talked to us about the color wheel and then gave us instructions on how to pick three colors. And then he showed us how to do this. And I think this is a great way to see how colors work together. And I also wanted to say that I really appreciated that he went into detail on what all of these things mean. Because I never had a color class in um, college or high school. I didn't do art after middle school. And... I didn't know all the details like I, I've been to color work classes where they talk about hues and other things but I didn't know about um, how the these different things were made because they didn't specifically say it in those classes so I really enjoyed having this class and talking talk about the value scale and how those colors are made so that I thought was really valuable information and he's um, I bought I don't think I showed you guys on the podcast but I did buy his um, coloring book and I also brought my It Itches book to uh, the class with me and he signed those for me. Um, he's one of my favorite my favorite knitting um, instructors. He's excellent. He always has excellent information. He's very thorough. He's funny and he seems seems to be a nice nice down to, eye, down to earth guy. <laughs> so that I took that class at Yarnorama, which is in Page, Texas, which is halfway between here and Houston. Um, not halfway, it's only an hour from here, so it's not quite halfway. But I did also want to mention that um, the Hill Country Yarn Crawl is going to be coming up in October, and I will have a trunk show at the Happy U from, on October 7th and 8th, so if you're doing the Hill Country Weavers, uh, not Hill Country Weavers, Hill Country um, yarn crawl, you can come and see me there if you want to. Um, and Yarnorama is another one of the shops that will be in there. I think there's about 20 shops listed. If you go to the website for Hill Country Yarn Crawl, you can find out all the information. Um, it's a lot of fun, and last year I didn't do the yarn crawl. I just went to some shops and took some classes, but this year I'm planning to not only do a trunk show, but I want to attend and go to a bunch of the yarn shops, uh, myself. And hopefully I can drag along some friends. <laughs> the other thing um, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to mention Knit Die Spin is still going on and there are more entries, but you can still enter. I did want to mention, I had a question about knitting with um, indie dyed yarn. Your project needs to be all indie dyed yarn. That's part of the, um, the rules. That's why I said indie dyed yarn. So if you have 50-50 commercial indie dyed, that's not going to count. Um, if you, but there's so many indie dyers out there. If you're watching this podcast, you probably own yarn from indie dyers. Miss Babs, me, uh, Mustache, uh, who else? Nomadic Yarns, Fiber Nymph, um, Knitter's Nightmare, Madeline Tosh. A lot of those, those are all indie dyed yarns. So it's anything that's not a huge business, like not a classic elite is not an indie dyed yarn. Um, 
Wisdom Yarns is not an indie dyed yarn. Blue Moon Fiber Arts, there's a lot of indie dyes and you probably own one in your stash and you've probably, you could be knitting with one right now. So that would give you a good entry. You can also dye uh, any skein of yarn or fiber or you could spin four ounces of fiber and any of those things would get you an entry into the knit dye spin and I'm happy for you to dip as many times as you want. Um, I'm hoping this is recording. I'm not going to check it until it's done. So I also did want to mention I do have a de-stash on Ravelry. And the Undead Yarn FO winner for this month is Crouching Cheese and I did PM her. And the person last month who won the Potiversary for the skein of Wild Rumpus, I have emailed her and she uh, will be getting her skein soon. I have it ready to go. Let's see, what else? Um, I did mention that I'm going to be at Into the Wool on September 1st, and I will be vending there, and it's also a retreat, so if you're there, come say hi. And I will be vending at Stitches Texas, which I think starts September 22nd. It's the third week of September, so September's going to be very busy. <laughs> and then in October, like I mentioned before, it's the uh, Hill Country Yarn Crawl, and I will be doing a trunk show there. I also wanted to mention that I did sign up for the Hill Country Weavers Retreat, which is in March this year. It's March 1st, and any of you guys who signed up, I hope to see you there. Um, I'm whizzing through this. Good. It says 11 minutes. I can't believe I got through all this stuff in 11 minutes, but I just, I have to get, I want to get one up because, like I said, it might be a while before I can do another one. This is my enabling. I got a sock blank from Fire Nymph Dye Works. And I'm very happy I got this because she had put out one similar to this for her um, Sock Blank Yarn Club. And I was like, oh, I wish I had tried it. I love how she did the resist dyeing. It's really cool and I love these colors. So it's going to be fun to knit up. I think I have a Sock Blank problem. <laughs> um, the only thing I wanted to mention about watching, well, I'll just mention real quickly, I talked my husband into watching Penny Dreadful Season 1 with me. He thinks it's really weird and crazy, but he likes it, so that's fun. Um, I'm watching X-Files Season 2 and Blacklist Season 2, and those I'm watching by myself. I guess he doesn't feel like re-watching X-Files, and he said after Blacklist Season 1, he had enough of Red Reddington. <laughs> but I'm still finding it interesting. And for reading, the one thing I wanted to say is that I'm reading The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, and I've probably mentioned him before, but I can't remember. It's been a while. This is part of the Percy Jackson series. It's really geared toward middle schoolers, and that's why when I listen to, I usually listen to um, his books, and I listen to him in the car. Um, the narrator is really good, and um, I enjoy listening. I like hearing about the different Greek gods and goddesses and demigods and I just find it really interesting and I like his writing style. Um, if you have a middle schooler, I would recommend uh, getting them into these books, especially if they like Harry Potter, things like that. Really, really fun to listen to. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is I did reopen a questions thread. I used to have one and I think it got deleted somewhere or it's been pushed back in in all the threads so there's a new question thread so if you have any questions about dyeing or spinning or crocheting or knitting let me know or questions about me that are within reason <laughs> I'd be happy to answer them and um, I'm sorry if I've been talking really fast but like I said I do have other things to do but I do want to get something up so I will talk to you guys again mm, it may be two or three weeks at least two weeks maybe three before I talk to you guys again. But um, with that, I want to say get busy knitting or get busy dying.